Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, neglected Naruto met Kaguya and falls in love with her. Part 2, hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Katsuki Akuma 191, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Naruto Uzumaki, otherwise known, as the Purple Bloody Fox SSS rank. Am I seeing this right? I think I'm high. I must be high, I said, making everyone besides Minato, Menma, Naruko, and Kashina laugh, but instead I made them jealous. Oh my little Naruto-kun has finally become SSS rank ninja. I'm so happy for you. Kaguya hugged me so hard it made us fall to the ground. As I was struggling to get out of Kaguya's bear hug once again, Kakashi coughed trying to get our attention. Can Naruto please show some respect to the Hokage? You go to Kaguya-san. Kakashi said, making Kaguya get off me, and making me sigh, and besides, once this is over you two can spend your time doing something more efficiently. Kakashi said with an eyed smile, making every girl in the room blush, even Kaguya, and making Minato blush a little. I was just standing there with a confused face, I didn't know what they were talking about. As I was about to ask, I was silenced when I saw Kashina punch Kakashi in the head, sending him to the ground. Sai so Naruto, why are you in the bingo book? And why are you called to the purple bloody fox? Minato asked me to be quiet. I don't want to talk about it. I said, making Menma speak up. He's just too scared to admit the fact that he's a murderer. Menma said, making everyone besides the team gasp. Minato turned to me once again, but his face was filled with sadness. Is that true Naruto? He asked, making me turn away. Yeah, it's true. I said, making Minato gain a face of guilt. I'm sorry that you get used to it after a while, so no need to apologize even if you are the cause for it. I said making Minato flinch a little, and making Menma speak up in a tone that I wish she never speaks in. Don't talk to your father like that. Menma roared in anger, making me turn to him. He's not my father. Even though he is the reason that I'm alive. I said making Menma even angrier, and Minato looked down with guilt, but he quickly did a 180 with his emotions, and got serious. Okay. So Team 7 can you please give me the report on the mission? Minato asked, making Kakashi, and Kashina nod. The mission was a success, but it did have some interesting bumps. Kashina said to her husband, making him raise an eyebrow. What kind of bumps? Minato asked, making Kashina respond while well, Naruto was the cause for the bumps in the mission. Kashina said, making Minato turn to me, but turn back. What did he do? He asked, making Kashina respond. He cooked for the whole village, he used a summoning contract, but we still don't know what it is. He fought the enemies head on with ease, and lastly he he slaughtered all of Gato's men. Kashina finished making Minato's turn, and was about to ask a question, but was soon stopped by Kaguya. Naruto-kun did you do it? Kaguya asked, making me nod, and making her tackle me to the ground again, oh congratulations. Did you finally meet her? Kaguya asked in excitement, making everyone raise an eyebrow. Naruto what is she talking about, and please explain what Kushi-chan is talking about. Minato asked, making me sigh. Mini time skip. As we were walking out of the Hokage tower we were all talking about random things, but Kaguya got my attention. Naruto Kaya and Kaguya said in a seductive voice, making me look at her with a happy face. Yes. I asked her to lean close to my ear. Are we going to have fun Kaguya asked with a smirk, making me back away from her. Okay listen up my cute little genin before you guys go here. Kakashi said, handing us a flyer. What is this? Sasuke asked, making me respond, well what you are currently holding is the pass to get into the Chunin exams. I said, trying my best to ignore the fact that Kaguya is rubbing her face on my face. Aw oh, sweet. Nemu said, making me respond no it's not, you have a high chance of dying in it. I said, getting a nod from Kakashi, and Kashina, he's right, Menma, you do have a high chance of dying. Kashina said, making Menma growl. Well now that this is done, what is everyone going to do now? Kakashi asked, making me respond first, I'm going to go shopping with Kaguya. I said, making Kakashi grow an evil eye smile low as the sedate perhaps. Kakashi asked for Kashina's attention, wait, what's happening? Kashina asked in confusion getting a reply from her daughter Naranai, is going on a date with what was her name? It was Kaguya. Yeah, Kaguya-san. Nuriko replied, making Kashina nod until she grasped the situation though. Kashina yelled, making everyone look at her. Is there something wrong with Kashina? Kakashi asked, making her turn to him. Damn right there's something wrong. I don't want my son going on a date with an older woman. I don't care if she is your fiancé. I forbid you. Kashina screamed, making me turn to her with an evil glare. Last time I checked you aren't my mom. I said getting a bit mad which made Mema smirk evilly well I'm still an adult. Kashina said, making me roll my eyes I don't care. Let's just go to Kaguya. I said, making her smile, and nod. Mini time skip. Hey naruto -kun, are you okay? Kaguya asked, as I gave her a sad smile. Yeah I'm okay. I said, making Kaguya nod, hey Kaguya, can I show you something? I asked her to nod okay let's go. I grabbed her hand, and began running. 
Mini time skip. Hey Naruto-kun, why are we on the Hokage monument? Kaguya asked, making me respond, well the sunset is going to make this even better. I said ignoring her question hey Kaguya, over the time on the mission I realized something. I said, what was it? Kaguya asked, making me smile at the sunset. Well the song that I made. I said, making Kaguya blush and smile, you made a song for me. Kaguya asked, making a nod. Do you wanna hear it? I asked, making her nod. I then proceeded to take out my mp3 player, and began to play this song. Found you when your heart was broke. I filled your cup until it overflowed. Took it so far to keep you close, keep you close. I was afraid to leave you on your own. I said I'd catch you if you fall. And if they laugh, then fuck them all, all. And then I got you off your knees. Put you right back on your feet. Just so you can take advantage of me. Tell me how's it feel sitting up there. Feeling so high, but too far away to hold me. You know I'm the one who put you up there. Name in the sky. Does it ever get lonely? Thinking you could live without me. Thinking you could live without me. Baby, I'm the one who put you up there. I don't know why, yeah, I don't know why. Thinking you could live without me. Live without me. Baby, I'm the one who put you up there. I don't know why, I don't know why, yeah yeah. They've loved about a hundred tries, hundred tries. Just running from the demons in your mind. Then I took yours, and made him mine, made him mine. I didn't notice cause my love was blind. Said I'd catch you if you fall, fall. And if they laugh, then fuck them all, all. And then I got you off your knees. Put you right back on your feet. Just so you can take advantage of me. Tell me how's it feel sitting up there. Feeling so high, but too far away to hold me. You know I'm the one who put you up there. Name in the sky. Does it ever get lonely? Thinking you could live without me. Thinking you could live without me. Baby, I'm the one who put you up there. I don't know why, yeah, I don't know why. Thinking you could live without me. Live without me. Baby, I'm the one who put you up there. I don't know why, yeah. You don't have to say just what you did. I already know, I know. I had to go, and find out from them. So tell me how it feels, oh whoa. Tell me how's it feels sitting up there. Feeling so high, but too far away to hold me. You know I'm the one who put you up there. Name in the sky. Does it ever get lonely? Thinking you could live without me. Thinking you could live without me. Baby, I'm the one who put you up there. I don't know why, yeah, I don't know why. Once I finished the song I looked towards Kaguya who had tears running down her face, but they weren't tears of sadness. They were tears of happiness. I wonder how Naruto-kun is doing. I haven't seen him since graduation, I wonder how he is. As I was walking, I looked up to the Hokage monument, and activated my, and saw if Naruto-kun was up there, which I was right he was up there but. Who is that? Naruto's pov. She looks up at me with a sad look. I looked away from her so I wasn't persuaded by her look. Kaguya we can't do this, I said, as I began to move away from her, making her give me a sad confused look. Naruto-kun, is it because I did something wrong? If so just tell me I'll make sure I change to make you happy. Kaguya pleaded, making me look away from her in guilt. I can't do this, it's wrong. I thought, as I did my best to not look at Kaguya. You did nothing wrong Kaguya, it's just this is wrong. We can't do this, I'm too young. I responded by making Kaguya's face falter. I see you just don't want me. Kaguya whispered in a low enough tone for me to hear. I quickly turned around, and looked at Kaguya who had her head down. Before I could speak, Kaguya yelled, don't bother. Kaguya shouted, making my eyes wide, Kaguya. I began to get worried, she never shouted at me before so when she did it hurt me, you're just like him, you're a monster. Kaguya said with hatred in her voice which made me flinch. She then proceeded to stand up, and began walking away from me. As she left I started to feel my eyes heat up, and right, as they heated up I felt a tear going down my left cheek. Kaguya. It's not your fault, it's not the first time that this has happened. What do you mean? Well, do you know about the Sage of Six Paths? He was the one who started the ninja world. Yes he was, but he is also the oldest son of Kaguya. He's what? Don't scream. Sorry. Like I was saying before, he was the oldest son of Kaguya, and the youngest son was his brother. Before the sage, Kaguya was here, but she is not from this world. I don't know where she's from so don't ask. When she arrived, she fell in love with a simple human that was the leader of a village. Over time the two began to fall in love, and then one day they had two children, and they were named Hagoromo Tsutsuki, and Harumo Tsutsuki. But then, as days went on war began to break out, and the man that Kaguya loved soon forced her, and the children out of the village out of horror. That's why. What should I do then? Should I go after her? No, it would be best if you give her time. Wiping my tears away I stand up, and I jump off the Hokage monument, and begin to freefall. As I reach the ground I started to make my way to the forest of death to train. I want to forget. Time skip. Sasuke's pov. Hey Sasuke, have you seen Naruto? Mom asked, as she started to get worried. No, I haven't. Didn't he come home last night? I asked, getting a nervous snot from mom. He didn't. 
I haven't seen him since you guys got back from your mission. Mom responded by making dad respond, maybe we should ask Kaguya-san, she's always with Naruto, so maybe she knows. Yeah, maybe she does. I responded, as I began to walk up the stairs. I started to hear a faint noise of sniffling, as I got closer I could start to hear it more clearly Na Naruto-kun I'm sorry. Is Kaguya-san crying? I thought, as I began to make my way back downstairs to talk with mom, and dad. So what does she say? Mom asked, making me shake my head. Right now is not the best time to talk to her. I said, making mom get a little mad. All I want to know is where my son is. She responded, making me a little afraid. I'll go find him. Itachi said, as he ran out the door. Naruto's pop. Why would she act like that? I don't understand, is it because I look like him? Or is it because she just wants to use me for my body? Thoughts were going through my head, they were starting to overwhelm me, and I just couldn't take it anymore. As I stared at one tree I began to walk towards it, and when I reached it, I let out a loud scream, and began to punch it repeatedly until my hand began to bleed. Don't bother. You're just like him, you're a monster. You killed everyone, you're a monster. You're just a demon hiding among us humans. You don't belong with humans you murder. In the spit of rage, I began to hear voices which made me start to cover my ears. It started to go into the tailed beast state without even having control. I just couldn't handle the voices. Destroy. Destroy. Before I could destroy another tree, I was soon grabbed into a hug by someone which made me start to struggle from the hug. Calm down Naruto-kun. A soothing voice whispered, let go of me. I want to destroy the village. I screamed, still trying to struggle out of the hug, making the person tighten the hug even more. Calm down Naruto-kun, you're not in the right state of mind. The voice said I said let go of them when I turned around, I quickly calmed down, and I began to go out of my tail beast state why? 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 I yelled, making the person giggle. You hated it more than me. Why do you protect them? I shouted, making the person hit me on the head. You idiot, you are the only reason why I don't want to destroy it. The person said. After all you are my little FOX. Everyone started to look towards me with confused faces, but Sasuke was the most concerned. Naruto. He asked me, I looked back at him, and shook my head making him calm down. Narunai, what is he talking about? Naruko asked me, leave me alone. I said, as I ignored her, and walked away. As I was walking, I noticed a chair so I decided to go sit, but before I could someone yelled. Alright asswhoops. If you don't get in the room, you will fail. Now move. I know that voice. I thought, as I looked towards the voice I saw a man I thought I wouldn't see ever again. Hey old man. I screamed, making everyone look towards me as he nuts everyone thought hey Naruto. How have you been? He asked, I've been good. I have gotten engaged and tortured, but otherwise, I'm good. How's Anko? I responded well Anko has been depressed that you haven't been by boo wait. You gotten engaged since when? That's not relevant, anyways I'll drop by, I, but can we get on with the exams? I asked Ibiki to nod. Time skip. I'm going to skip past the last part of the exams because everything's the same, well besides Naruto's fight. Kiba forfaces match against Naruto's. Naruto's pop. Come in. You wanted to speak with me, Lord Hokage. In front of me was Minato. Apparently, he wanted to speak with me about something important so I can't you ever call me dad. I just stared at Minato like he was crazy. You are not my father. So you wanted to speak with me, so get on with it. Alright. For the rest of the month, you will be under training with two of the Sanin. I looked at him before I nodded, and I walked towards the window. Minato looks at me with a worried look, I look at the window before I open it, and quickly take out a kunai, and throw it to my left. Minato looks at me with his eyes widened. In a brief second, I hear a scream coming from a man, I look behind me to see a tall man with white hair that goes past his waist just like Kaguya Jiraiya, it's good to see you. Jiraiya takes a look at me before his eyes widen Naruto. In the blink of an eye, he rushed towards me, and hugged me so tight that I felt like my back was going to break. But before I could struggle, I was dropped to the ground Jiraiya you were going to crush him. Show some restraint. Great, now because of Jiraiya I'm going unconscious. Hey, Naruto-kun, can we talk? Yeah, what is me? It's about Kaguya. Oh if you want me to apologize I plan on it. Okay, just do it soon. Time skip. Naruto's pop. Can I do it? Can I talk to her? I don't think I can, but I want to. Fuck it. My eyes began to open up slowly, but they soon shot open when I heard voices. I need to calm down. I started to breathe slowly so I could control the voices. I hate that. I thought. As my body started to wake up, I got out of bed, and began to make my way to the closet to get my stuff together. As I stared at the closet I noticed that there were only black colored clothes. I just sighed. I think I'm an emo. I whispered, I just sighed again, and just stuffed my supplies, and my clothes into a backpack. Once I finished, I made my way downstairs, and when I did I saw Jiraiya, and Tsunade sitting at the table with Makoto, Kagaku, and Kaguya. I guess when I walked on the stairs, I made some noise because when I looked at them, they looked right back at me. 
Hey, Naruto, how are you feeling? Sorry that I squeezed you too hard. I looked at Jiraiya, and gave him a nod. I looked at Tsunade, but I then looked to Kaguya. When we made eye contact, I noticed that she had a single tear going down her right eye. Excuse me. Kaguya stood up, and walked out of the house making everyone look at me. Is there something going on between you two? I look at Makoto, and nod, making her sigh. I'll go talk to her. Mikoto said, as she stood up don't. I'll go do it. It's my problem anyway. I made my way to the door, and when I got to it I opened it, and I saw Kaguya sitting on the stairs looking into the sky. Hey Kaguya looked at me, as I closed the door. Hey. She responded looking back at the clouds. Can we talk? I asked, making her nod. I made my way to where she was, and sat next to her. I want to it's okay, it's my fault. I got angry at you for something you didn't do. Kaguya said, as she looked at me I was just so mad. You rejected me, but I know why. I'm older than you, you are younger than me. So I understand why you rejected me. Kaguya said, making me look at her. Mei told me everything. So I know why you were angry. Kaguya just stared at me with widened eyes. So that's why I want to make you a promise, I paused. When I turn 16, we can do it. Kaguya looked at me with her eyes even more widened. She just stared at me with tears going down her face. I looked at her with a smile, and when our eyes met, we kissed. I love you Kaguya. I want you to know that. I will always love you. I love you Naruto-kun. I'm sorry for everything. I promise I will be the best partner that I can be. Pav. I think this is where Naruto-kun lives. Excuse me. Do you know where Naruto Uchiha lives? The young woman looked at me, and nodded. He lives down the street, take a left, and he will be there. I gave her a bow, and began to walk towards his house. And when I got there I felt my heart break. It was Naruto-kun kissing someone else. When we both separated from the kiss, and opened our eyes, but when we did I saw something through the corner of my eye. When I turned slightly, I saw Hinata standing there with tears in her eyes. What are you doing here? I asked in a surprised tone, making Kaguya turn to Hinata. Naruto-kun, who's this? Before I could answer, Hinata quickly turned around and ran, making my eyes whiten. Hinata wait. It felt like my words didn't reach her because she kept on running, making me sigh. I quickly looked back at Kaguya who just sighed go after her. And just like that, I took off at an astonishing speed. Why did she run away? Was it something I did? No, I did nothing to her. What did I do? You're so dense Naruto-kun. She obviously has a crush on you. She was before I could listen to me anymore I started to see Hinata come into view. Hinata. When I called out her name it made her stop, but it also made her stiffen up. As I began to slow down, I was able to finally catch up to her. What was that? I just stared at her back which kinda made me feel kinda bad Hinata can you at least face me? Please. Hinata was hesitant to turn, but she did, but when she did she made me gain a sympathetic look. Hinata, can we talk? Hinata just gave me a nod. Okay, can we start off with why you ran off when you saw me? Hinata started to tense up. I saw you kissing with that Wu woman. I started to feel a bit sad at what Hinata said. So she saw me kissing Kaguya, maybe that was too much for her to handle. I couldn't respond to Hinata which just made her look to the ground you know, ever since we were kids, you saved me from those bullies, and ever since then I fell in love with you, but I just stared at Hinata with my eyes whitened because I noticed the tears coming down her face. But when I saw you kissing that lady I felt my whole world fall apart. And today was the day I was going to confess my feelings to you. My eyes whitened even more. I just stared at her, and I couldn't do anything else. I saved it. I don't care, you never bothered to notice that I've been like this. I just stayed silent until she said something that made my eyes tear up. I can't believe I fell in love with the monster. I just stared at her with hate, and with sadness. He, I guess that's it then. We're not friends. Well, who would want to be friends with a monster like me? I just started to walk away leaving Hinata standing there crying in hate, and in sadness. Might, as well get Tsunade, and Jiraiya. Time skip. Kaguya's path. Will Naruto Uchiha, and Niji Hayuga make their way to the stadium? Everyone was quiet, no one said anything which made me confused, but I just let the thought fall deep into my memory. So he's late. I always knew he would flink out in the end. I turned to where the voice came from, and I saw the voice coming from Menma. Menma Nai don't talk about Nair Nai like that. I looked next to Menma, and saw that there was a little girl that looked to be younger, but not too younger than Menma. I think that's Mido if I remember correctly. If you do not make your way to the stadium, you will be disqualified. May is he almost here. Give it a second Kagu Sama. Naruto's pov. I'm here. Everyone gasped in surprise when they saw me. Alright, now that the participants are here we can start. You should quit while you still can, destiny has already decided your fate. I just stared at Niji like he was crazy. Are you okay? Because I think I know the outcome of the fight. I said making Niji activate his proctor to start the match. 3. 2. 1. Go. Niji quickly rushes at me, and starts to throw a series of punches along with a sidekick, which results in me being kicked to a tree. 
Like I said destiny has already decided your fate. I started to stand up and wept the blood that was coming from my lip. That's funny. But you know when destiny and fate decide on something they will do everything in their power to make sure that happens, but if not they make something happen. Niji stares at me with a confused look. You'll understand soon. I then proceeded to take out a kunai and rush at Niji in speed which he couldn't follow. When I reached him I took the kunai and sliced his cheek and drove the kunai into his leg, making him scream. Everyone was quiet and was shocked that I would do something like this to a member of a clan that was one of the great clans in the village. I quickly backed up, letting Niji take a deep breath. You still believe that destiny has already decided my fate. Niji was quiet which made me smile. That's what I thought. Before I did anything else Niji got into a stance which made me raise an eyebrow, so you plan on going all out. Finally, I then proceeded to run at Niji intentionally, and let him hit me with his finger which blocked off my chakra points. I then started to stand up, but I struggled to damn when people say that this was the worst physical pain you could feel I thought they were joking. As I tried to stand up I started to spit out blood. Sasuke's puff. What is he doing? Is he trying to get himself killed? Mom asked me to look at her in worry. Everyone looks at Kaguya with their eyes widened. Why is this funny Kaguya-san? My son is going to die. Kaguya simply gave mom a sly smile. Didn't you remember the fight between the Namikazes? Naruto-kan is simply letting people think that he's weak so he can prove them wrong, and besides. He didn't go into a tail beast state. Naruto's puff. It's no use, if you proceed to go on anymore you'll die. I just snickered, there's no way I can die. I still haven't married the woman I love. Niji just looked at me with his eyes widened, but they soon went back to normal. Proctor calls off the match if he's not going to die. The Proctor was about to raise his hand until I interrupted no. I can still fight. I said, as I was able to stand my body up. I began to laugh like a maniac, which made everyone quiet. Hey Niji, do you believe in monsters? Niji just narrowed his eyes to my question. What if I don't? I just laughed. Well how about I show you? I then proceeded to summon all of my chakra. Me. Third stage. Thump thump I began to feel my heart rate increase, as my body began to be covered in chakra it's just like the other times. Only I have more control. I then started to hear gasps from the crowd which made me smirk. But the look on Niji's face was more interesting this chakra. There's no way I can cut off your chakra network. How are you doing this? You don't have the power to control chakra. I gave Niji a sadistic grin which made him flinch. You know, I began to move slowly to him. I'm in the bingo book, and I'm labeled SSS rank. So what makes you think that I can't control my own chakra? Niji just began to back up slowly, as I got closer. What's wrong, scared? There's no need to be. Not after what you did. Once I finished my transformation I was now enveloped in a purple-like cloak that went throughout my whole back, and what was the most revealing thing about it, was that my whole body even my clothes were all purple. When I turned to look at my new awesome cloak, I noticed that it had the kanji for 10 and 9. Once I was done gawking at my new transformation, I turned to Niji who was starting to freak out. What's wrong with Niji? Scared. Niji just started to move his hand towards the kunai pouch which made me smirk, as I did the same. So, this is what it comes down to. Wanna do this close combat? You must be crazy, but you are from the Hayuga clan so you are cocky. I should have expected this. Hearing my remark, Niji began to rush at me with a kunai in his hand. I just stared at him with a grin, but, as he began to get closer I got ready to attack. When he was about 5 meters away from me I teleported from where I was. Niji activated his, and began to look around to find me, but he was to no avail. As he began to lose his composure, and began to turn vigorously to find me, he still didn't. Show yourself. Niji screamed, and I began to laugh to myself as he really this scared of me. I just stared at him before I sighed. Might, as well finish this. Out of boredom, I rushed to Niji from behind before he could sense me. I hit him in the back which flung him into the stadium wall which resulted in the wall being cracked, which made everyone gasp in fear. Naruto Chiha wins the first round. Medical ninja are needed here immediately. Everyone then began to cheer, as I began to look to the rows of people above watching, my eyes fixated on one person. It was that one person that I wanted approval from. And when my eyes landed on her she gave me something I didn't expect to see. She was winking at me, and giving me a warm-hearted smile. I ended up blushing, and hiding my face when I made my way back to the stadium. Mini time skip. Naruto Kyu and before I could do anything I was soon pulled into a very, 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 and I mean very strong hug. Kagu she didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She did. My eyes widened in horror, as I watched Kagu kiss me. Everyone around us was smiling while some others were jealous. I just tried my best to get away from the kiss, but I failed miserably. I ended up getting kissed more. Time skip. As we watched Sasuke finish Gar off with a Chidori to the chest we all started to cheer, while some were hesitant. I wasn't one of those who was hesitant, but I should have been. As I was cheering along with my family, the air started to be filled with bloodlust. This bloodlust Naruto he's a Jinchuriki. 
I nodded mentally, and started to get a bit serious. As I watched closely I saw that Gara was starting to build sand around him, and that sand that he was building started to form into a hand that was soon used to grab Sasuke. Before anyone could react to the sudden attack, feathers started to fall down to the ground, making everyone fall asleep. The only ones that were awake were the ninja that were on guard, ninja teams, my family, and Kaguya. There were also other ninjas from different villages, but the ones that I assumed were attacking were sand and sound. I quickly turned to Kaguya with worry in my eyes. Kaguya I need you to go with mom back home. I don't want you getting hurt. I'm going to go help Sasuke and go control Gar. Do you understand? Kaguya quickly nodded and brought me into a deep passionate kiss. Once we separated she sent me a smile. Make sure you come home, if not I'll kill you myself. And Kaguya started making her way to the exit. Alright, time to do this. Sasuke used a Chidori on the arm. I shouted making him nod, and did what I said. As I fell to the ground from the stadium row, Gar began to scream, and started to thrash around in the bubble of sand that he was in. Before Sasuke, and I could do anything, Gar began to rush out of the bubble covered in sand that had blue streakings going across the sand on his arm, while his eyes had a star in them. He's going through a transformation. But before Gar could reach us he fell unconscious. When he fell he was soon caught by a girl that was probably around our age, but seemed a bit older. She was holding him on her back, and she sent us both a death glare Kankuro, cover me. She screamed, as she started to run out of the stadium before we could chase her, me, and Sasuke were suddenly enveloped in smoke. As we were coughing we could hear clashes, and screaming of other ninjas fighting. I quickly formed chakra into my hand, and swept it to the right making the smoke disappear. When the smoke cleared I let to Sasuke go after them, I'll stay here, and help the others. Sasuke was hesitant, but he nodded, and began to pursue Gar. I soon turned to the cage booth, and noticed that Minato was fighting too, but he was trapped in a purple box that was being controlled by four others. Don't die old man. You still have a tone for what you did to me. Kuchu Snow Jutsu. Once I finished, five people appeared in front of me. Hey Nirukan, what took you so long? I look at Kumiho. While the village is being attacked so Kumiho just smiled, and began to look around her. So that's why you summoned these two? I just gave her a nod. Alright then, so what do you need us to do then? The sand fled, and he is most likely trying to go into a tailed beast state. In barely a second, Kumiho's eyes white in the sand, damn it everyone's eyes were instantly on Kumiho Shukaku. I was so confused about who this Shukaku is, but apparently Kumiho hates him. Letting my curiosity get the best of me I speak up. I'm confused, Kumiho, why do you hate this Shukaku person? What did he do everyone besides Kumiho then turns to me, and tackles me to the ground making my eyes whiten. But before I could open my mouth, Sumu covered my mouth with her hand, preventing me from speaking. Kumiho then turns to all of us with a confused look. What are you guys doing? Aren't we going to figure out a plan of attack for that damn dracoon? Everyone then sighed in relief, and got off of me, but before I could move let alone speak again, Sumu did the same thing, but she simply whispered, don't ask Wani sama about Shikaku or why they hate each other. She can get rather we both look at Kumiho who was just standing in front of us with a sadistic smile plastered on her face aggressive with that topic. I gave Sumu a nod which made her nod, and she slowly moved her hand away from my mouth. So are you guys done? I really want to kill that raccoon right now. We all looked at each other before we looked at Kumiho. We're ready when you are. I replied by making Kumiho nod. So what's the plan? I simply gestured for them to get closer so here's the plan. Sumu, you and Alabama are going to be the long range attackers. If I'm right on this then we will have a huge advantage against Shikaku. Both demons nod, I then turn to the others alright, so Santhana since you and I are the strongest fighters when it comes to close quarters, you both will attack Shikaku's legs. And lastly, me and Kumiho will attack Shikaku head on. Everyone then nodded, and we all began to chase after Gar. Mini time skip. Sasuke's pov. Pant pant how is he this powerful how does Naruto intend to beat him? Fuck he's coming back. Going through my thoughts, I tried to find options that I could use to help turn the battle in my favor, but sadly there weren't any. As I was about to attack I soon heard a voice calling out my name, and just when I thought backup was arriving I could catch some rest, but no. It just had to be her. Sasuke, I'm here to help. I quickly dodged an attack by Gar, but just, as I thought I was safe it suddenly hit me. The attack wasn't even barely close why Sakura moved. Before I could move, Sakura vanished in thin air. What the? I couldn't comprehend what was going on. How was she that fast? There's no way she isn't capable of such speed. Those thoughts are what almost got me killed. Never take your eyes off an opponent. Gara shouted, as he started to swing his arm to me. I soon jumped to the air to dodge it, but I failed. Not because I got hit, it was because I wasn't in front of him. How are you holding up? Naruto's paw. How are you holding up? Sasuke quickly looks at me, and his eyes white in Naruto, what are you doing here? I thought you said you were going to help others I quickly rolled my eyes. That wasn't as important as this is. Gar is a, so of course, he would be more important. 
And besides, I brought back up to help us. Sasuke then looks around and stares at everyone. I hope you remember these three. I ask as I gesture towards the three vixens. When Sasuke turned to them he was greeted with casual waves. He then looked back at me and nodded. Yeah I do, if I remember correctly. Their names are Kumiho, Sumu, and Alabama Wright. I gave Sasuke a nice pat on the back congratulations. Not most people remember their names, and they ended up dead. You're lucky. Sasuke just widened his eyes before they drifted to two others. What about them? I turned to the ones he was talking about, and I quickly replied. Those two are Sathana and I, two of the deadly sins. Sasuke just stared at me like I was crazy side there from my summoning contract, but I don't like to bring that up. I said, making Sasuke nod. So, what about Sakura? I shrugged my shoulders at Sasuke's question. What about her? She's with Kakashi. Sasuke quickly responded back, but I thought I had Sumu teleport her. Now let's stop talking and start fighting because I don't think Gara is too happy. I said, as I pointed behind me, making Sasuke's eyes whiting. Behind me was Gara growling like a beast. Sasuke sat this one out, we already have a plan, and Akinda has some major outcomes. Sasuke quickly nodded and began to run back to the village, and when I saw that he was out of eye view, I turned to Gara who was smoking like an idiot. Before I could say anything, Gara was soon engulfed in sand making Kumiho speak. He's going into a tail beast state. Let's do this. Everyone soon nodded, and we began to get into position. Suma and Alabama were on the tallest trees, and they had their most attacks ready. Sathana and I were waiting for the signal to begin the assault to weaken Shikaku. And lastly, I was standing next to Kumiho who had an evil grin on her face Kumiho, are you going all out? Kumiho soon giggled no, but if you want me to go all out on you in bed, I would she replied making me sigh, Kaguya is not going to allow that, and I love Kaguya. Kumiho just looked at me, and pouted. But hey I'm here if you need me, we all are. Even if the other lazy bastards just want to sleep, have sags all the time, and be jealous of each other, we all are here for you. After all, you are the second one to gain the demon contract. I gave Kumiho a warm gentle smile. Thanks, it means a lot. Oh, and Kumiho one more thing. Kumiho stared at me with a questioning look, thanks again for, you know, saving my life. Kumiho simply gave me a hug, and whispered in my ear. And thank you for stealing all my hatred. Thank you, Narukon. I instantly felt a large wave of power enter my body, as I began to be engulfed by an unknown power. When I began to turn around to get a better look at my surroundings, I saw that I was in some kind of orange body that was made up of chakra. This is this power I feel like I fell before. When did I? As I tried to grasp an understanding of this power, I heard a familiar voice that made me go pale. Mindscape. Hey there, near you and it was that same deep voice that I heard when I was a child. It couldn't be. I slowly began to turn around to see whose voice it was, and when I did my eyes whitened. What? Not going to say hello back. Geez, even after seeing me in my human form, you still get scared of seeing me in my original form. Fully getting a full view of the being, I saw that same big large fox that always seems mad. I then began to feel a smile appear on my face. It's been a while hasn't it, Kurama? Wait, I thought your name was Kumiho I yelled loudly making the large fox cover his ears. Geez don't yell so loudly. And yeah my original name is Kurama, I just like Kumiho, and I like it even better when you call me that T.O.O.I side, as I was already regretting bringing this conversation up. Wait, so what do I call you, and why are you in my mindscape, and where is me? I yelled in a surprised tone which resulted in me getting slapped across my mindscape, but before I fell to the floor or hit the wall, I suddenly felt hands on my back that stopped me from doing neither. Like they weren't even there I didn't even bother paying attention to whose hands were on my back, I just instantly started arguing with Kumiho. What the hell Kumiho? What did I do? I yelled, making Kumiho yell that. You keep yelling even after I told you. I soon opened my mouth to say something back, but I felt not capable of doing so. Will you two ever stop bickering so much? You guys act like siblings fighting over a toy. A voice spoke, when I heard that voice I instantly recognized it, but it sounded different, it sounded sweet, kind, warm, but most of all deadly. I quickly turned my head to see who was touching me, and when I did I felt my cheeks redden. In front of me was a girl who didn't look to be that older than me, maybe around 16 to 17. She had nice slender curves, she also had nice soft black hair that was the normal length, and that went over her shoulders, and rested right on top of her chest, and lastly, she had light magenta eyes. But worst of all, what made my cheeks redden was the fact she was completely naked. Why are you here mother? When those words left Kumiho's mouth, my eyes widened, and so many thoughts rushed through my head. Oh don't be like that, you know you miss me. As Kumiho opened her mouth she was soon silenced by me when I spoke. Wa who are you I asked, as I ran towards Kumiho who am I? Naruto-kun, I'm hurt. The girl replied, as she stood there, and put her hand on her waist I might, as well finish this Kaguya-sama, and be pissed at me if you die. My eyes soon widened when I heard a response. Naruto-kun allows me to reintroduce myself. 
I make the ten tails, and Kumiho is my daughter. Mei replied, as she began to walk over to me, and Kumiho there's no way. How can you be Mei, she doesn't have a human form, and even if she did she wouldn't be naked. I said, making Mei's side fine, I'll show you. She then brings up her hand, and snaps her fingers, and when the two fingers made contact, I was soon enveloped in a dark purple cloak that had the kanji for ten, and nine. Believe me now. I soon began to nod my head vigorously, making Mei smile. Now while you and Kumiho go fight my idiot son, I'll start to work on other things. I nod making Mei speak once more also, Naruto-kan if you need power just ask. Outside. Alright, you ready Kumiho? Always. As we all stare at Gar in quietness, a large cloud of smoke soon appears, and we all start to get ready for what might happen. Before anyone made a move the wind blew over the forest, and the smoke, and, as a result of the wind, we saw something very scary. It was an ugly raccoon-like dog. Is it him? Is that Shukaku? Everyone stayed quiet, as Kumiho was starting to huff, and huff hey Kumiho are finally you goddamn raccoon. Before anyone made a move, Gar said Naruto Uchiha, you are just like me, you have the blood of a killer. You have the blood of the innocents. I want you to satisfy my desires with your blood. I then felt shivers go down my spine when Gar stated he wanted my blood, it made me feel like I wasn't safe. Let's do this. Kumiho then rushes towards Gar and starts to get close, but starts to avoid swings from Gar get away. Narakon, we can't do anything if he keeps swinging like that, I can't risk getting you hit and breaking the transformation. I then bit my bottom lip fuck. Alright, then I got a new plan. Suma Alabama. Attack his head. Thus in a few seconds, I saw that Gara was being bombarded with attacks that were strong. With just one attack would cause a huge cloud of smoke, but at this rate, they were going at it would seem that Gara would be dead. As the smoke slowly drifted away we all saw that Gara was still alive, but barely. I'll kill you all. Gara yelled, as he slowly brought up his hands play possum jutsu. Just on the last letter, Gara fell asleep which resulted in a laugh hooray I'm finally out. Shukaku yelled, as he started to twirl around Shukaku. Stopping what he was doing, Shukaku stopped twirling, and slowly began to turn around with an evil grin on his face. Big sister is it you Shukaku then begins to squint his eyes a bit, and when he got a good look his eyes widen it is you hurry. Big sister came to meet me hurry. Everyone beside Shukaku and Kumiho starts to look at me. Hey Kumiho is he okay? Is he okay? Is he okay? Is he okay the hell he isn't. He ate my fucking dango. Just like a magic word, Shukaku turned around at the right moment and began to smirk, and it was delicious hurry. He yelled with a smirk which provoked Kumiho even more Shukaku. Before I could do or say anything I was instantly thrown on top of Shukaku's head. When I landed I quickly turned around and saw that Kumiho was in her tailed beast form and was biting Shukaku on his shoulder. Alright, I guess that works somehow. Time to get to work. Instantly, I turned around and I started to walk to Gara out big sister you're hurting me. I then began deadpan at the sentence Shukaku said, paying no attention to it anymore I started to go Gara again. As I kept walking I started to see Gar even more, and with no recent movements, I began to run to Gar, and, as I reached him I screamed out. Sumu Alabama, Santhana, Ayo when I give the word I want you to use everything you got. Alright, time to bring you back to your senses. I then grabbed Gar by the shoulders, and banged my head on his which resulted in me having blood fall from my head. What the hell. It didn't work. Fuck, okay calm down we still have another way. But that could get us both killed Sai it's the only other chance we got. Saime, I need you to bring me to the third stage. Without a second wasted I was engulfed with my chakra cloak. Not sparing any more time, I quickly hit Gar's head again, which woke him up dot alright. Now I hope this works. I quickly transferred chakra over to Gar alright, do it now. And before I could comprehend anything. I blacked out. Naruto-kun, can you feed me for me? I got to get started on breakfast. I slowly get out of bed, and start to change my clothes weird since when did Mei move in? Wait, when does she ever get a human form? I quickly rushed out of the room, and went straight to the kitchen, and when I made it I felt like I was in heaven. In front of me is Kaguya in an apron wearing nothing else underneath it. My face quickly reddened, as I kept looking at Kaguya, darling, did you feed me yet? As Kaguya turned around she stared at me with a smile. Good morning sleepyhead, can you feed me for me? I gave Kaguya a nod which made her smile, and she pointed behind me. When I turned around I saw a baby girl with black hair sitting in a baby chair with a pacifier in her mouth, which made me raise an eyebrow since when did Kaguya and I ever have a child? And what's with Kaguya and that apron? I just stared at the baby with my blue eyes before they widened with the... As my eyes kept staring at the baby I saw that the baby had a smirk on her face. I always knew you had the perverted mind Naruto-kun, but never to this extent. Just wait until Kaguya-sama hears about this. Like someone breaking in, I instantly jump up or try to... As my eyes swept the room I saw that I was in my room, but I was alone. I then grabbed my head, as I felt it start to hurt. 
Naruto-kun, U-P-R-V-E-R-T hearing a voice, my eyes soon drifted to my left, and when they laid eyes to where the voice was coming from, I felt a small smile appear on my face. Laying down next to me was Kaguya with her arm wrapped around my chest. Great. Now how else am I going to get out of bed while waking her up? I muttered, I see that you're up right now, how do you sleep Naruto-kun? My eyes soon white in me, what the hell was that dream you perverted? Don't worry Nero-kun, you'll get used to it. She does that to everyone, so there's no point in complaining. My eyes soon calmed down a bit. Hmm, Naruto-kun you seem to like what you see I soon started to get a bit uncomfortable at what Kagi was saying in her sleep. Mei, can you give me a speed boost, please? I soon felt my body get overwhelmed with power for a split second, and I soon appeared in the middle of the room, with only my boxers on which made me blush for a second, before I ran to my closet for some clothes. As I ran through the closet for some clothes, I found a pair of black handbook pants, and t-shirt. Guess what I would have to do? I then proceeded to put on my clothes, but I guess I made too much noise because the second I put my shirt on, Kaguya looked up from the bed, and looked directly at me with her eyes widened. Hey Kaguya Naruto-kun. In the blink of an eye, I felt my whole body pinned to the ground which made my eyes whiting. Naruto-kun. You're okay. I miss you so much. I tried my best to stand up, but it was useless because I might end up getting tackled again, I miss you and Kaguya. You think you could get off me though, you kin to making me nervous. Kaguya then looks up from my chest with a confused expression. What? How am I making you Nero, Naruto-kun you pervert? Kaguya then gets up quickly, and gets on the bed, and covers herself with the blankets please don't violate me. I felt my face become red quickly. I was just about to open my mouth to say something, but I was soon silenced by the door crashing down, and with my family at the other end. Naruto. Oh no. Time skip. So, how long have I been asleep for? The room was soon engulfed in silence which made me get a bit worried a month. Kagi responded by making my eyes white in a month I looked towards my family, and they all gave me a nod which made me a bit nervous. What happened while I was asleep? I hope that nothing major happened while I was asleep, but then again I probably could care less. Well, nothing major besides Lord Forth being in a coma. I just nodded at what they were saying, which just made them get a bit worried, which grabbed my attention. What's wrong? Everyone soon becomes a bit confused. What do you mean? I then gave them all the dumbest looks that I could make. I may, I can sense emotions so there's no point in hiding whatever you're hiding, just tell me. Well, we thought you would at least care a bit at the fact that Lord Forth is in a coma because well he's your biological father. I just stare at my family with a blank look. I don't care about him, or them. What they did to me was unforgivable. Everyone gave me a nod, but they still kept going. Maybe you should visit him, just to see how he's doing at least. I shook my head in response, which made them all grow until Sasuke said, what about Mido? My eyes soon widened at the name of my little sister. What about Mido, would you at least visit her? You haven't seen her since you left. I looked at Kaguya who just had a smile. I always wanted to meet your little sister, maybe it isn't that bad of an idea. I just smiled at Kaguya before I turned to my family, and gave them a nod which made them smile. Both Kaguya and I then stood up, and proceeded to make our way to the door. Well, let's go see how she's doing. Right after we left the house, Kaguya started to ask tons of questions about Mido which was alright with me, but there was just too much. Hey Kaguya, do you think you can ask one at a time? It's kind of hard to keep up with all of your questions. I pleaded, oh. Sorry, I just got carried away, I guess I just want to meet your sister so bad that I started to ask too many questions. It's alright, just try to keep it under control, Mido isn't the type to forgive if I remember correctly, I warned, but I guess that wasn't enough okay, I'll keep that in mind. So, why is she like this? And why haven't I seen her yet? Kaguya asked well, I think the reason she is like this is probably because she got it from me, or most likely what happened between me and my family. For the reason why you don't see her. I don't have an answer for that because I haven't talked to her since my 7th birthday. I replied. I see Kaguya answered. Right after the talk, it was silent between us two, maybe it was because I mentioned my 7th birthday, or it just brought back some bad memories for her. But in all, it was just quite, well until I heard someone call my name from behind Naruto both Kabi, and I turn around to see a girl around my age, but younger, maybe around a year younger. Yes, that's me, and you are. I didn't have the patience for this, I just wanted to see my little sister, and go home, but here I am being called out. How could you not remember your own sister? In one instance, I was tackled to the ground, and I swear, as I was tackled, I could see a glimpse of Kabi having a jealous look. Naruto-kun, who is this young girl? Are you already cheating on me? Kaguya asked with her voice laced with jealousy what I'm not cheating on you, I don't even know who this is. I shouted, making the girl get off me. But then again, I could never forget about my sister. I thought how do you not remember your own sister she shouted, I never had the best family. I responded bluntly which made her gain a sad look. But well there was at least one person that was do you actually think I would forget you, little sis. I said with a small smile. 
Mito then stares at me before she smiles and tackles me again, which makes me groan. You actually remembered. She said with her voice breaking, I'm not going to forget my sister. But do you mind getting off of me? Nodding, Mito gets off of me, and when she does she slowly starts to look around, and notice that there is a crowd being drawn, and let's just say that the crowd wasn't getting too fond of the contact between me and Mito. Hey Mito, let's go somewhere else, I'm not too fond of this, I said, as Kagi began to get a bit closer to me. Uh, what do you mean? She asked, as she began to look at me with a different look. Flashback. Mito's pop. Alright, that's it for today. Tomorrow we go back to the village, Lady Tsunade said, as she began to walk towards Master Jiraiya. As they began to talk, I sealed and unsealed my water bottle, and began to open it before something came into my mind. Excuse me Lady Tsunade, I have a question. I said, as I took a sip from my water which gained her attention. What is it? She responded, why does everyone hate Naruto? Is Naruto really a killer? I asked nervously, both Lady Tsunade and Master Jiraiya looked at me with a saddened look before they looked at each other with a serious look. Naruko, there's something we haven't told you about Naruto. Lady Tsunade said, as she sat down that Naruto wasn't the child of prophecy. You are. Master Jiraiya said, which made me confused. But that doesn't answer my question. Why does everyone hate Naruto? Why does everyone think he's a killer? I shouted which made them both gain a sad look because he's a killer. Lady Tsunade responded which made my eyes widen. On his previous missions, Naruto has killed at least more than 5 people, and on his recent mission, we received word that Naruto has put himself in the bingo book, and not only that, he has a higher ranking than us. His rank is that of the Akatsuki. My head was soon engulfed with thoughts, but I couldn't prepare myself for what I would hear next. Not only that, Naruto is the Dayton Shy. Flashback end. There's no way Naruto is the Dayton Shy. Come on Mito, we got to go. Okay, but where are we going to go? I quickly showed Mito an evil grin which made her recoil in shock. The best place to go for reunions, I said, as I turned back to the crowd. Oh, and stay close to Kaguya, she'll take you to where we are going. Before Mito could forge an answer, she was already silenced by Kaguya who was looking at me with worry Naruto-kun. Are you sure about this? Why can't you come with us? Kaguya was actually starting to get worried at this point which was starting to make me feel some type of way. Don't worry, I'm just going to go talk to mom, that's all. I swear I'll meet you guys there. I said with a cherry smile which made Kaguya look like she was contemplating letting me go or not, while Mito, on the other hand, looked sad. Fine. But promise me you'll come, as quickly, as possible. I look at Kaguya with a smile, and nod. I then look over to Mito who instead of having a sad look like before, now has a look of confusion. Don't worry sis, I just need to go talk to my mom about something. Just stay with Kaguya, you guys might get along. After all, she wanted to meet you for so long. I then disappear, leaving the crowd speechless along with Mito. Kaguya's pov. Be safe Naruto-kun. The walk was not as long as I thought it was, but it was silent without Naruto-kun's cheery attitude. This is a place. The restaurant in front of us was named Ichiraku Ramen. Apparently this is one of Naruto's favorite places in the village, but I don't see him visit it too much, I wonder why. Ichiraku Ramen is this where we're supposed to be going? Yes, it is. Your brother suggested it, he loves this place so much with a passion, I said with a kind smile. Well, after you. I lifted up the blanket, and let Mito walk in first, and walked in right after. Right upon entering the establishment, I felt a sense of nostalgia. Memories of watching Naruto-kun started to flood my mind, and I started to smile when I saw the most trustworthy of all people Naruto-kun knows. Ah. Welcome. Come sit down, what would you like? Looking at the available seats, I see that Naruto-kun's seat has yet to be taken. You should sit in it. But may wouldn't that be disrespectful? In a sense, we're talking about Naruto-kun. If you were to sit there, then he would be forced to sit on your lap. Now, wouldn't that be enjoyable for both of you? Just think about it. Naruto-kun's hot body, sitting just above your legs. You head close to his, his ear in range for you to do whatever you want with IT. They stop it. You guys are too easy. Naruto's pop. I need to play my cards right, and if I do, I can most likely avoid all means of them trying something. I should just ask everyone, and see what they think about this. What do you think of me? To be honest with you Naruto-kun, I really don't care, but if you're asking then I guess I should give some type of answer. In my opinion, you should just wait, and see how things unfold, and let them play out. Kamiho, what about you? I'm not like my mother, I just don't care. Great, so I have an answer from a pervert, and yet one's from my parents. I should just hurry up, Kaguya and Mito are probably already there. Opening the door, I can feign voices talking to each other, and it sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Taking my shoes off, I start to make my way to the kitchen, and when I do, well let's just say it changes everything from this night, and onwards for the rest of my life. Mom? Dad? I call out to Naruto. Mom replied with a monotone voice, nervously making my way to the kitchen. 
I saw mom, dad, Itachi, Sasuke, Jiraiya, and Tsunade. Hey, why are you guys here? I asked son, sit down, please. We have something to tell you. I then took a seat next to Sasuke, and when I did everyone looked at me okay, what is it? I'm kinda in a rush right now. I said, as I rubbed my head with a smile. Naruto, I have information from my spy network, and we believe the terrorist group called the Akatsuki are out hunting the, and we believe they are going to go in order, but we don't have enough information to support that claim, Jiraiya said, as straight in his back which made me raise an eyebrow okay, but why are you telling me this? I asked, and when I did, I wish I was more prepared for the answer. We're telling you this because you're going to go with Master Jiraiya for the next four years for training, Dad responds, as he rubs between his eyes. You're kidding right? I asked jokingly hoping for a response, but everyone just stayed quiet which gave me my answer when do I leave. Jiraiya takes a sip of his water before he responds the day after tomorrow, at dawn. My mind then began to go to different places, and started asking questions, but the biggest question that was pondering my mind was what will Kaguya think about this? What about Kaguya? Can she come I asked hoping that Jiraiya would say yes I'm sorry Naruto, but I need you to be focused, and having her there is just going to delay the training. Hearing his answer, I started to get a bit angry with him. What is the training anyways? Why is it so important that you have to send me out of the village for 4 years? Naruto, lower your voice. Dad shouted which made me go silent. As much as we hate seeing you go, it is necessary. He responded why is it though? Why can't I do it here? I asked because we're going to teach you how to control the chakra of the nine-tailed fox. Emptiness. That's all Naruto felt for the past 4 years. The rigorous training was already hard enough without the use of chakra from Mayor Kumiho, he's been having to keep Jiraiya in the loop, when he kept trying to push Naruto to use the chakra. He didn't want to use the chakra, nor did he want to constantly rely on it. During those four years of emptiness, Naruto grew distant with Jiraiya, and others, at first Jiraiya, thought it was just a sudden shock of finding out about training only two days before. As time grew on, Jiraiya started to actually notice major changes in Naruto other than the physical ones. Besides being distant, he was quick-tempered, uneasy around others, stopped smiling, and lastly, he was silent. The only time he would notice a smile from the blonde was when he would get letters from the love of his life. From what he knew, Kaguya, if that was her real name, has been watching Naruto ever since he was born. Not only that, she saw what he went through, with the villagers, and his parents Shireya didn't trust her, but others did, even Tsunade. He tried to gather information on everything he could from Kaguya, but she would always avoid it. The main question that has been bothering him was if Naruto and Kaguya were having relations. He tried to ask Naruto, but he would just either blush and stay quiet or give him the line what gave you that idea. It pissed Jiraiya off that he couldn't get an answer out of his own godchild, but that only encouraged him to keep asking. Today is the day. Naruto was up bright and early for once without Jiraiya waking him up you're up earlier than usual, what's the occasion? Quickly stretching, Naruto changes into a new pair of clothes and begins to pack everything up. We're going home today, and I can finally fulfill that promise that I made to Kaguya. Four years ago, Naruto made Kaguya fall in love with him even more, when he sang a song for her, that made her want him even more, and when she tried to show her love for him, he ended up giving her the wrong impression which led to them avoiding each other until they talked, and it ended with Naruto promising her when he turned 16, then they can show how much they love each other. The only people that know about their relationship are very limited few, and among those few are certain individuals that know about Naruto's power. Getting everything sorted and readied, the blonde walks out of the rented room and walks to the room next to his and bangs on the door violently. Or, get up you old perv it's time to get a move on. You could hear a groaning coming from the door, but you could also hear burping which signaled Naruto that his sensei was drinking last night and most likely partying. What is it? You could smell the alcohol coming off of Jiraiya, he smelled like he drank a whole bar which pissed off Naruto even more than he already was. He just wanted to go home and see his soon to be lover. Could it kill you to be up and ready on time for once? You act like that grey-headed perverted late chimpanzee, but worse. Jiraiya was taken back that Naruto would even compare himself to Kakashi, but worse. He could only imagine seeing Kakashi snickering away at Naruto's comment. G.S. Calm it down, I was DR drinking. Cut me some slack. He could almost regret what he just said. Naruto now had a newfound habit of taking up people's offers, but not in a good way. Let's just say the last person that gave Naruto an offer ended up with a broken arm. Remember what happened last time? Jiraiya instantly went pale yeah yeah, whatever. I'll g get my stuff. Jiraiya went back into the room and tried to do what he said, but he was having trouble with all the ladies on the floor along with the booze. It felt like hours went by, but that's what happens when you're feeling impatient. Naruto was in no mood to wait around, he just wanted to get home and be with the love of his life. Hurry up, pervy sage. After waiting for like 5 or 10 minutes, Jiraiya finally came out with a small bag. You took too long. Naruto began to walk off with Jiraiya following behind him. I had to find my wallet so I could calm down. 
In response to what he stated, Naruto scoffed and just exited the hotel with only one thought in his head. I'm coming home. It was just like every other morning, in the Hidden Leaf Village, it was bright outside, and the birds were chirping. But this morning was soon to be a very different morning with a certain blonde on the way. In the distance, you could see a very young beautiful lady, and people could only describe her as a goddess, you could say. This goddess was just walking out of her apartment, and ever since people have found out that she was the owner of that apartment, they would always go up to her, and ask her why is a goddess, such as yourself, living in an apartment like that. You could do so much better than that. Why not come live with me? Now, if anyone was stupid enough to ask her that, then they would just be ignored, but if they decided to hit on her then, well, let's just say she knows a way of breaking the human body with any chakra. Usually, this goddess would just spend her days with each who has drinking tea, and just like Naruto, Kaguya was also distant, but not to the point of not talking. To her demise, she wanted to see Naruto, but she knew that it would be impossible to find him, and that, that was just something that changed her. She didn't go all emo like Naruto, but she did go back to acting like her old self. If she could describe these four years, she wouldn't say lonely, not boring either, and not unhappy. It would be lifeless. Some people would think that's a bit overkill, but it's not. Naruto has a way of making people change, but Kaguya was different when she changed, she was happy, full of joy, and full of love. Naruto gave Kaguya a meaning to live, and he was the only reason she was alive. She lost everything. Her kids turned on her, her previous lover condemned her, as a monster. She had a large void that she thought couldn't have been filled, but Naruto is filling that void. But when she found out that she wouldn't see him for four years, well let's just say that she changed, and leave it at that. But she wasn't the only one. Well, she was the only one that felt the way she did, but she wasn't the only one that changed. Everyone that Naruto knows has been training. Lee, Niji, Tenten, Kiba, hell even Shikamaru was, Ino, and Sakura trained with Tsunade, Shino, and Hinata. They were all motivated to train because Naruto was selected to be trained by Jiraiya. It must have been more than hours when in reality it has only been two. Naruto was so impatient through the whole trip that he somehow convinced Jiraiya to run with him all the way back to the village. The blonde just couldn't wait to get back home, he missed everyone, but he also didn't want to see them afraid of what they might think, but he knew that there was one family that he wouldn't care about what they thought about. The Uzumaki Namikis. They were the sole reason why Naruto changed so much. But he was also manipulated to change. That mischievous fox was the one that manipulated him. Every night, Kamiho would always suggest that Naruto should show some other type of ways of cutting ties with that family. Now don't get him wrong, he wanted to cut all ties with them, but he just didn't know how until she suggested a very good idea. Naruto had the appearance of both his parents, and those were going to be the most damaging thing that he can do to break his old family. Nothing hurts the most than cutting off ties with someone. So what are you going to do when we get there? You seem very anxious to get Naruto to zone out, he was just focusing on one thing, and that thing is what set him off. The gates. It was just the sight of two simple gates that set Naruto off. He couldn't hold it in anymore, even though he should have been tired from running. He just ran. He ran, and it caught Jiraiya off guard, which only made him sigh in disappointment. Naruto didn't bother listening, as always. The Hokage was the authority of the village. The strongest. No one would dare go up against him or her, especially the current Hokage. Tsunade Senju is the fifth Hokage, and not only is she the granddaughter of the first Hokage, the founder. She was also the teacher of Ino Yamanaka, and Sakura Haruno, and it just so happens to be that Sakura has an errand to run for Tsunade, and it requires her to pick up a package from the gate. Hey, good evening Katesu, Izumo. Did the package come? The gate boys just stared at each other before they looked at Sakura like she was crazy. You just missed it by a couple of seconds. Sakura was just confused, she thought they were playing mind games with her, but she was soon wrong when they told her to look behind her. Is that Lord Jurei Naruto's back? Sakura just couldn't hide anymore, she was so excited that her teammate was back after 4 years. Lord Jureya. Sakura practically scared the Sanin when she screamed his name, and ran in front of him stopping him dead in his tracks. No wonder she has the title of Banshee Jureya looks at Sakura with a tired expression. If it's about Naruto you just missed him. He's most likely heading to the Ichiha compound. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go see him. And with that Jureya left, leaving Sakura running past him. The breeze of the air. That's what Naruto felt. He always loved that feeling ever since he was little. And now, he is feeling it for the first time in a long time. He had a clear view of the whole street in front, and behind him, he could see everyone, he even spotted Sakura running past everyone, and it seemed like she was in a hurry. Should I talk to her? She's most likely trying to find me, but that's impossible unless she saw Pervy Sage. Bummer, I was really looking forward to surprising everyone. In rapid motion, Naruto threw a kunai right in front of Sakura's two feet, which resulted in her stopping and turning around quickly, which gained the attention of every civilian on the street and made them panic. Is there? Show yourself. Naruto could barely hold in his small laughter and gained Sakura's attention. 
Before Sakura said anything, Naruto dropped down from the pole which she was sitting on, and the end result of that was Sakura widening her eyes. Naruto. She practically ran, and tackled him to the ground which made Naruto groan in agony. You're back when did you get back? Oh everyone is going to be happy that you're back. Naruto could have sworn that he was going to go death due to the amount of screaming she was doing near his ear. Sakura, get the fuck off of me before I force you off. Although Naruto wanted to be happy, he couldn't. Towards the third year of training, Kamiho was actually merging her chakra with Naruto, which resulted in him gaining some of her negative aspects. Although Kamiho never acted like this before through the course of her time with Naruto, it was all a front. At the end of the day, Kamiho is a fox, and foxes deceive. Sakura quickly got off of Naruto, and back up a bit to put some distance between her and Naruto. Naruto. This is not the Naruto she knew. The Naruto she knew was not this aggressive, nor was he quick-tempered. Sai sorry about that Sakura, I'm just tired. You know, from all the walking and stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have tackled you like that. It was wrong on my part. Naruto just nodded and turned around and picked up his bag. So, what were you doing up there anyway? Sakura asked as she got a good look at Naruto. I was just getting a look at the village. I noticed that Tsunade is on the Hokage Rock. When did she become Hokage Naruto? Asked as he turned around and began walking to the Ichiha compound with Sakura following. Um, she became Hokage right after Lord Minato woke up from his coma and resigned, but Lady Tsunade was working as a temporary worker before that. Naruto was alright until he heard Minato woke up from the coma, but he just hid his anger. Hmm. What about everyone else? I wanna know how they are. Naruto requested well, everyone began to train right after everyone found out that you were going to be gone with Lord Juri for 4 years. But right after that, Team 7 was suspended for doing missions since we didn't have a back. After that, both Ino and I began to train under Lady Tsunade. Sakura explained. One last question. What about Sasuke? How has he been doing? Sakura then went silent. She didn't want to tell Naruto the bad news. Naruto then caught on and went silent as well until he asked one question that would forever change his life. What about Itachi? You should talk to Lady Tsunade about it. I don't think you would want to hear it from me. Naruto then realized that it was going to be a huge issue. Naruto then began to pick up his pace and started running towards the Ichiha compound with Sakura right behind him. Hey Naruto, wait up. And he just left you like that. What was your reason for not going after him? Tsunade asked violently as she looked at her old teammate with a glint of anger. Jiraiya just stayed silent, he knew the risks of letting Naruto go off like that. If Naruto finds out about the massacre, then he is going to go out of control. She yelled as she slammed her hand directly on her desk. I'll go find him. Jiraiya replied quickly. It may not seem like it, but after hearing about the Ichiha massacre, it made him feel angered. The Ichihas were the only type of real family that Naruto had, and now they're gone. This was unfair for Naruto, but Jiraiya knew that it was necessary. Right in the middle of the living room was blood. Everywhere. Splattered against the walls, furniture, and on the floor. Did you know about this? Naruto began to clench his hands into fists, and his fingernails began to run deep into the skin, resulting in tiny bits of blood drops flowing out. Sakura just stayed quiet, but she knew that she had to answer him. She wanted to say something, but she just couldn't find the right words. Answer me Sakura. Did you know about this Naruto screamed as he turned around and faced Sakura. She stared directly into his eyes, and her legs were trembling. Naruto's eyes, her teammate's eyes, were no longer the same ocean blue eyes. They were now red fox-like eyes. Before she knew it, Naruto had pinned her to the wall by her neck. I said answer me. Naruto was starting to squeeze on Sakura's neck, making her struggle. Nananir Sakura soon started to flutter her legs around, and her eyes started to slowly close narrow to please Sakura had a tear running down her left eye. She didn't want to die, but she couldn't do anything, each time she tried to say something she lost oxygen, and her strength. Naruto stopped. Naruto blinked, and suddenly let go of Sakura, and looked at his hands. Sakura immediately started to channel chakra into her hands, and move it to her neck which had a bright red hand mark on it, but, as soon, as her hand made contact, it began to fade. Sasakura I'm sorry I didn't mean to, I lost control, Naruto said, as he bent down, and tried to check on her before she screamed, get away from me. Naruto didn't know what to do. He didn't want to lose his friendship with Sakura, but it seems that it was going to happen. Sakura, I'm sorry. Naruto then began to walk towards the door, and he moved his hands to open it, but it opened before he could. The person that was standing in front of Naruto was none other than Jiraiya. I knew I would find you here. But of all places, you had to come here. Jiraiya could only feel pain for his students. He knows what it's like to lose someone precious that could be considered family. The only response Naruto could come up with was crying, and that is exactly what he started doing. Sakura is in the live living room. Naruto then ran out of the room with tears dropping, and Jiraiya just let him go. Jiraiya could only let him go, he didn't know how to comfort his student. 
Yuria then started to walk to the living room, and when he was around the corner, he could hear the whimpering of the girl. Sakura. Sakura then looked to where she heard the voice, and when she did she instantly stood up, and dried her tears. Lord Jiraiya. What are you doing here? Sakura asked, as she tried to get back to her normal self. I had a feeling that Naruto would come here, and after having a heated talk with him, she told me to go find Naruto, Jiraiya replied, as Sakura nodded nervously. Jiraiya took note of Sakura's posture, and the way Naruto acted before, and he knew what happened. He attacked you, didn't he? Sakura could only look down in guilt, as she regretted her choice to scream at Naruto. Well, I'm going to go find him, you wanna come with? Jiraiya asked, as he started to make his way to the front door with Sakura behind him. Yeah. Regret. That was all Naruto could feel. He regretted not going straight to Kaguya. He regretted not going with Jiraiya. He regretted hurting Sakura. And he regretted going back home. If he could go back in time to fix what he did today, he would. It was sunset, and it made everything Naruto felt worse. Naruto just couldn't stop crying. His family is dead, both of his brothers are nowhere to be found, he only knows that it's probably a bad reason that they're not here. So I was right. You're here. Naruto turned his head halfway to see the person that he wanted to avoid. It was Kaguya. Naruto couldn't muster up a response which only made Kaguya frown. Now, what's the matter? Kaguya asked with no sense of emotion in her voice, but Naruto could tell that she was worried, but just didn't want to sound like it. When Naruto didn't respond to Naruto, she just walked up to where he was, and sat down next to him. Over time you were gone, I would always come here, and watch the sunset. And each time it went down, I always thought of you. Kaguya said, as she continued to stay monotoned. There was silence between the two for more than five minutes, and Kaguya could only feel worried for Naruto Kaguya. Did you know? Kaguya looked at Naruto who was just looking straight ahead, so you found out. Naruto just nodded, and that made Kaguya look back. I'm sorry you had to find out on your own, it must have been hard dealing with those mixed emotions. I was planning on telling you when you got back, but it seems that I don't need to. Kaguya said what about Sasuke and Itachi? I know something bad happened to them. Kaguya soon began to be quiet which made Naruto white in his eyes. They're dead. Kaguya instantly looked at Naruto, and slapped him across the face which made him white in his eyes. No, you imbecile. They're not dead. Itachi was the one who did the massacre, but he was ordered to by the Hokage, and another person who I did not recognize. The sole reason for this was because the Ichiha was planning on a coup d'etat against the Hokage, who at the time was Minato. Sasuke went rogue, and that's all I know. Kaguya then looked at Naruto who had a face mixed with emotions. Anger, sympathy, betrayal, and sadness. Look at Naruto. I understand how you feel. You feel betrayed that Itachi did this without telling you goodbye. I went through something similar so just know I'm here to comfort you. So that's how you got that print on your neck? Ino asked. Everyone who knew Naruto was now standing in front of Sakura with confused and horror looks in their eyes. Are you sure that was Naruto? I always remembered him being quiet and laid back. So what happened that made him like this? Whispers started going round about how something might have happened to the blonde, but others thought it was someone. He's been gone for four years, and he later returns to find his adoptive family dead, and to top it all off, his two brothers went rogue. Having something like that can impact someone heavily. You're half right about that. Everyone's eyes soon widened when they heard an unfamiliar voice, and in less than a second, that unfamiliar voice was soon replaced with a face. You were always kind to me even now, which is a legitimate surprise, and I appreciate that. And like a thunderbolt, everyone was soon facing Naruto Ichiha who was now standing in front of everyone. You guys miss me. He asked, but only to be responded with silence until his best friend spoke. Welcome back. Shikamaru responded with sarcasm which resulted in Naruto rolling his eyes. He then changed his attention to everyone else who had fear in their eyes besides Choji. So I assume that the way you all are staring at me, Sakura told you about what happened. He was met with nervous snots which only made him look at Sakura and back to everyone. Let's go somewhere private, he stated, if you want to know what happened then follow me. So, as you know, I was gone for 4 years for training with Pervy Sage, and during that time I changed. Not just in appearance, but in personality, as well. Everything was fine until the second year. Being a has its perks, but it also comes with a risk. You can have a bond with the tailed beasts, but each of them has different ways of acting, and varying from the tailed beast, each of them has different personality aspects, and me being the of the nine tails, I have a higher risk of running amok, and losing myself. The nine tails fuels her powers from my emotions, and my hate for my family is gradually making her more powerful, and making it much harder for me to keep her under control. And ever since I left the village, I didn't have anyone to keep me calm besides Jiraiya, but that old geezer doesn't help at all. The only person who's alive right now that can keep me under control is Kaguya. Given what Naruto said, he expected everyone to be confused and afraid, but he was mistaken. Everyone has a look of understanding. Well besides Shikamaru. 
No one had any questions, nor did they know what to say, but Naruto could see it in their faces. They wanted to ask questions, but they're afraid of his reaction, but one look at Shikamaru, you could tell there were some holes in the explanation. And Naruto knew that he just wanted to see what Shikamaru had to say. Naruto, that's a bad habit you have there, when do you plan on stopping it? All eyes were on Shikamaru in an instant, and no one was surprised when they saw him laying down on a tree looking up at the clouds. Typical Nar. What do you mean Shikamaru? What kind of bad habit does Naruto have? Sakura pondered Shikamaru, and I have known Naruto longer, and we have gotten used to Naruto leaving out extra information. It's second nature to us. Choji answered, which made Naruto nod. I knew you guys didn't forget. But yes they are correct, I did leave out some information. The Nine Tails has been merging her chakra ever since the second year, and that I have been getting her negative aspects. Sakura, you remember how I snapped at you yesterday. Sakura flinched a little at the recall of that memory, which didn't go unnoticed by Naruto ya, yeah, what about it? She questioned, that's one of the negative aspects, the seal that is placed on me is gradually getting weaker by my hatred, and little things such, as outbursts, getting very violent, distant, quick-tempered, and being very aggressive, are all effects of her chakra merging with my own. Everything was starting to make more sense for Sakura now. The outburst, quick-tempered, and aggressive. That's all the signs that Naruto showed yesterday. Sakura thought while well before Sakura could say what she was going to say, an anbu with purple hair, and a cat mask suddenly appeared right behind Naruto which startled him, and he quickly drew a kunai out with it on the neck of said anbu. Naruto, it's just an anbu calm down. Inu yelled. The anbu didn't hesitate either, and had her sword pulled at the same time, and both Naruto and the anbu had each other on death's door with both weapons on their necks. Naruto, being Naruto, slowly brought back the kunai, as did the anbu, and they just stared each other down. Lady Hokage has requested your presence. Naruto slowly felt himself being filled with the urge to kill, but he tried his hardest to suppress the urge, but the urge was just too strong, so he took off at a blinding speed. On the way to the Hokage residence, Naruto had to make a small stop to a dark alleyway to suppress his urge, and just his luck, it was the red light district. Heikai just one slash did the job. Blood was splattered all over Naruto's clothes, and the walls of the alleyway you didn't have to do that dot it's not my fault. It was that stupid fox. She's been merging her fucking chakra into me, and this is the result of that Naruto didn't have time to waste arguing with me. He just killed someone, and he didn't have time to do anything, but it did feel good. The rush of seeing blood made Naruto feel complete. Even though it made him feel good, it felt wrong. He felt like with each kill he made, he would get closer to becoming a monster. Naruto didn't have enough time to waste, Tsunade wanted him immediately, and she was expecting him to be there, but Naruto had to deal with the body, so he doesn't get thrown in jail or even worse. Sent to death. But lucky for him, Mei taught him a certain thing that annihilates everything that is in the user's desires, which was weird since she said that he was going to need it later down the road. Tail Beast Annihilation. The body was then covered in red chakra that was oddly similar to Gumiho's. Once the body was covered, it evaporated into nothingness which made Naruto sigh in relief. Right after that, he went back to his original task. Meeting Tsunade. Where the hell is he? I thought he was up right in the middle of Tsunade scolding for an anbu, the person of interest, being Naruto, appeared right in front of Tsunade's eyes along with the anbu. Calm down granny. It's not her fault, I just got caught up in some personal affairs. Naruto explained. The anbu was ready to attack Naruto at any time. Ever since a couple of minutes ago when she first encountered him, she gained this uneasy feeling. It was like he was hungry for blood. It just wasn't that, it was the look in his eyes. They were the eyes of a bloodthirsty animal. What the hell did I say about you calling me granny? Tsunade yelled which made Naruto smirk. Well, what am I supposed to call you? You're old, and those milk bags Naruto. Tsunade suddenly stood up, and punched Naruto so hard that he flew out of the building. Or so she thought. I swear he gets on my nerves. Right after that sentence left Tsunade's mouth, the room started to be filled with a burst of maniacal laughter, which gathered all the anbu in the building, to start to surround Tsunade with their weapons drawn. Granny, 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 I think it's time you realize that I'm much stronger, and quicker now, but uh, it still seems you don't know how to hold back. Naruto teased with amusement which made everyone in the room look at Tsunade's desk, which instead of being filled with her, was replaced with Naruto sitting back in the chair with his feet on the edge of the desk. You know. Come to think of it, I don't see how you can stand this this chair is so uncomfortable. So Jiraiya wasn't lying. Tsunade asked what gained Naruto's attention. Me being this fucking awesome. Or about you being old. Naruto jokes that he got a death stare from Tsunade don't disrespect the hook at Tsunade raised her right hand, and the anbu that spoke out stood down anbu you may leave us. Tsunade ordered which all said anbu obeyed. Getting out of the chair, Tsunade said sternly yes ma'am. Right away ma'am. Naruto quickly got out of the chair, and went back to the middle of the room, and Tsunade walked back to the chair, and sat down, and looked Naruto directly in the eye with a stern look which made him go pale. Naruto, as of this moment, you will show me respect, and talk to me not, as a friend but, as the Hokage. 
Is that understood? Tsunade asked sternly once again. Naruto nodded in response, and just listened. Jiraiya gave me a rundown about what happened during the four years you were gone, and the reason I'm asking is that I want to hear your version. She said with her fingers intertwined with each other. Well, we're going to be here for a while then, Naruto said, scratching the back of his head. Tsunade simply smirked at the response, and just casually responded. Well I don't mind. Unless you have some place that is more important to be. As of that very moment, Naruto could swear that Kagi was going to give him hell when he gets back home. He already imagined what she's going to say, and how she's going to punish him for being late, and missing dinner. She almost reminds him of his mom. Actually I do. Naruto casually responded which made Tsunade raise an eyebrow. Please evaluate more on this. Tsunade said with an interesting tone. Naruto could only sigh at this, no matter the outcome, Kaguya is still going to get mad at him, and then later punish him. It may not seem like it, but ever since the day I got back, Kaguya and I have started living together, and she has a set of rules for me, Naruto said in embarrassment. Tsunade just stared at Naruto like he was crazy. Naruto was known for not following rules even when he was adopted by the Ichiha, but hearing this was just not believable, so what you're trying to say is, you're following rules. Naruto nodded slowly. Tsunade was stunned. No, stun couldn't be enough to describe what she just heard. A maze would seem more like it. What makes these rules so different from the others? Tsunade asked eagerly, she can get very scary. Naruto explained can I at least send the shadow clone over there or leave one here, and I just go home. Please. Naruto begged Tsunade. The only thing she could do was laugh. This was a first for her. Ever since she knew Naruto, he never acted like this when it came to anyone. You can send a shadow clone there. I like to hit things that don't disappear. Nostalgia. It hit Naruto like a bag full of bricks. The memories that he wanted to forget, the memories of his childhood were now starting to flood his mind like a pool of blood. All the cuts and tears he shed were starting to come back to him. He couldn't believe that became a ninja for this village. The village that would torture him and make him become a different person. The person who he didn't know that he was becoming. Damn it. Kaguya is going to kill me. I can't even imagine what she's going to do to me fear started to overwhelm Naruto as he rapidly increased his speed. He could have just teleported home, but he was too afraid of what she was going to do. He didn't want to be there in an instance, nor would he want to be there late. It was a stalemate for the blonde, so he just decided he would just take the risk and run home. It was most likely 8 at night when he arrived home. Knowing what he was going to encounter when he opened that door, he decided that the best course of action was to check the windows to see if the house was empty or not. Lucky for him he didn't see anything, so he just took the opportunity and sneaked into the house. Naruto-kun, a stern voice filled the room, and Naruto was now filled with fear. Did you forget about what we talked about? Naruto just stared at Kagi in horror. The goddess was sitting in the living room drinking tea in a calm position. On the outside, she seemed calm, but on the inside. On the inside she was furious. No Naruto was starting to stutter, and he knew that he couldn't lie to her. She could tell when he was lying, and that bothered him. He could never tell if Kagi was lying to him or anything, and that crept Naruto out. It seems you're telling the truth. Now, tell me. Where were you? You missed dinner. Naruto gave Kaguya a look of confusion, as a response. Didn't you listen to the I did? But, that was a shadow clone I want to hear it from you. Kaguya said, as she opened her eyes, and set her cup down, and looked Naruto directly into his eyes. Do I have Naruto-kun? Kaguya said sternly I was talking to Granny Th that's all. Naruto said in a hastened voice. Kaguya stared at Naruto for a couple of seconds before she stood up, and, as she did, Naruto started to get nervous. She then began to walk towards Naruto, and, as she took each step, Naruto could imagine his death. The last step Kaguya took emplaced her directly in front of Naruto who is behind a wall, and, as they stared each other down, Naruto's heart started to pump harder and harder, and, as each pump went by, Naruto's face grew brighter. Of course, this didn't go unnoticed by Kaguya. She knew that he was nervous, and that made this even more enjoyable for her. Kaguya then started to move her head closer to Naruto's ear, and when she was close she whispered Naruto-kun, at the call of his name, Naruto felt his spine tingling, and that made Kaguya smile. You know Naruto-kun. You did promise me that when you turn of age, you will show me how much you love me do you still want to fulfill that promise. This was a turning point for Naruto. He didn't know how to answer this. This was something he wasn't prepared for. He didn't know that this was so nerve-wracking. Kaguya slowly retracted her head from Naruto's ear, and smiled. Kaguya we don't know much about each other. Giggles how about this? Once we do this, she then moves back to his ear, and starts to whisper again. We'll talk about each other. Kaguya then moved away from Naruto's ear, and slowly moved closer to his lips with her eyes closed, and Naruto did the same, but they were both hesitant they moved closer, and moved away from each other until they just moved closer, and, as they did. She was never used to being like this for millennia, it felt pleasurable. Yes. Kaguya was about to say something, but she stopped himself from saying anything. 
I have to say something, but Wakagaya was starting to have conflicting thoughts on what she should do or say, but she couldn't think of anything else besides Naruto. Kaguya slowly bit on her lip, and she just couldn't do it anymore. Naruto saw what Kaguya was doing, and he didn't know what to do either. His instincts were telling him to not stop, and he knew that if he didn't do something then this would stop. So he did the only thing that he could do. He kissed her. The kiss surprised Kaguya, and it made her entire body feel hot. I love you Kaguya. I love you, Naruto Uchiha. The two lovers instantly fell asleep in each other's arms, and they didn't have a care in the world if someone was listening, but Naruto was probably going to regret that tomorrow, when a certain grey-haired ninja brings up the events that played out. Father. The door slowly creaked open, and revealed Fugaku, and Makoto. I don't want to participate in a death match with my son. Itachi slowly walked closer to his parents' ICU line with the other side. Silence once again took the room. Itachi staggers to straighten his body father, mother I we already know Itachi. Itachi, promise me this. Itachi slowly brought his sword closer. Take care of Sasuke. I will. A tear slowly fell from Itachi's Sharingan, and his sword soon began to rattle in hesitation. Don't fear it. This is the path you've chosen. Compared to yours, our pain will end in an instant. Our philosophies may differ, but I'm proud of you. Tears began falling onto Itachi's fist, and once again, hesitation took control. You truly are a kind child. The blade soon was raised, and with two rapid succession strikes, both Fugaku and Makoto were dead. Mom, Dad. Naruto instantly woke up panting, sweating, and his eyes started hurting, which resulted in him grabbing them in agony, and this startled Kaguya greatly, as she woke up with her eyes white in non-air, it was just a nightmare, calm down, I'm here. Kaguya hugged Naruto tightly, and tried to calm him down with a soothing voice. It was Itachi. He killed them. It felt so real, was it because of the Shuringen? Or was it because Naruto has Itachi's blood running through his body? Naru, it's okay. I'm here for you. Naruto couldn't understand what was happening. He didn't know what to think of that nightmare. All he knows is, he just wanted to be near no one besides Kaguya. At this point, she seems like the only one who could comfort him, since she's been through something similar. Naru, I know how you feel. Trust me I've been there, I know what it is like to lose a family. I was betrayed by both my sons. Naruto slowly moved out of the hug, and looked to Kaguya. I'm sorry I didn't know. Naruto soon felt bad now just for making Kaguya bring something up that she probably wanted to forget. It's okay Nair. Let's just forget about it. I don't want this day to be ruined. Now go back to sleep. Kaguya soon covered herself back up with the blanket and laid back down, leaving Naruto confused. Hey Kaguya, question. Why are you naked and why are our clothes on the floor? Kaguya turns over and looks at Naruto with a sly smile you don't remember. Well, maybe I should jog your memory. Before Naruto could respond, Kaguya jumped onto him, and began to kiss him. Naruto didn't know what to do. He didn't know if he should go along with it, or if he should make her stop. Memories started to overflood Naruto's mind, and everything from last night started to come to him. The pleasure, and the love. In that very instant, Naruto remembered everything. As Kaguya kept kissing Naruto, she felt him get harder, and she started to get poked on her thigh. Oh. It seems you're hard. Kaguya couldn't help, but feel embarrassed. Even though she and Naruto slept together, she still loves him greatly, and just him staring at her makes her embarrassed, but him seeing her naked. It's just too much. Hey, Naru, you think we have enough tea before she knew it, Naruto was on top of her, but something was wrong. Naru. Naruto's hair was covering his eyes, and he was pinning Kaguya down. Why? Naruto asked Naru. What's wrong? Naruto didn't know what to think now. Before Kaguya acted somewhat like this, a couple of days she wasn't acting like this, but now, now she's acting like this. Why are you acting like this? Kaguya was starting to get worried. This was not the Naruto that she fell in love with. Well, he is, but he was different. Nero, you're scaring me. Kaguya being a goddess, could handle Naruto, but she wanted to see if this was an act, but a goddess being scared. That's never going to happen. But don't get it wrong, Kaguya is getting scared, but this was Naruto. Her lover, a lover that was supposed to protect her. But now she's starting to doubt if Naruto is ever actually going to be her ideal lover. Scaring you. Scaring you, you're scaring me. You're changing. I don't even know who you are for fuck's sakes. I don't even know if I gave my first to the woman that I love, or if I gave it to someone who just wants me for sags. Kagi was baffled. Being accused of being a stranger by the one you love hurts, especially if you just got done being intimate. But not only was she baffled, but she was also hurt. She felt like crying, and getting away from Naruto, as fast, as she could. Sags. Sags can't you see that I love you why does it matter to you so much? I love you just for you. That's because I like to indulge in lust doesn't mean that I want you for sags. Do you know how hard and boring it is to keep up my goddess persona? I had to keep it up ever since I fucking arrived here. I just want to be me and love you the way I want to love you. It may not seem like it, but this couple was going to be in for a very, very rude awakening. 
But back to the argument, Naruto was speechless. He didn't know what to say so he just got off Kage and made his way to the closet so that's it. Nothing. You're not even going to say one goddamn thing. Naruto just put clothes on and stayed silent which made Kage get angrier at Naruto. I don't want to have the same outcome we had 4 years ago, so answer me. At least say something. Kage was actually starting to get very aggravated that her lover was not responding and that was just starting to piss her off. What the fuck do you want me to say? This is too much for me to understand. I just gave you my first, and now you're telling me this was all an act. What am I supposed to say? I don't know. Maybe and I'm sorry Kagi, I just didn't know that you love me this much would be enough. Kagi screamed well I'm sorry, I have too much on my mind. One minute I killed someone, and next I'm being intimate with you. That kind of creeps me out. Killed. More like murder. Naruto killed that person in cold blood. Killed. Nero what the fuck did you do? What do you mean that you killed someone? Naruto couldn't believe that he just said that. He couldn't believe that he just told the person that he loves that he murdered someone. Please just forget about it. I don't want to talk about this anymore alright? I'm sorry for screaming at you. I accept you just the way you are. So please, don't ask. A small smile soon arose on Kaguya's face. You accept me the way I am. Prove it then. Kaguya has a sly smile, and got out of the bed, and walked towards Naruto with no clothes on what Naruto started moving backward, in fear of what was about to happen. Why are you moving there? Come on, prove it. Naruto couldn't respond, he could only keep moving back. Kaguya kept that sly smile on her face, as she kept walking towards Naruto. Naruto was soon up against the wall again, but this time, they were in the living room. The windows were see-through, and anyone could see, that was a problem for Naruto, but for Kaguya, she could care less. I want you please Naruto. Naruto, you're late. It's your first time back, and you're already late. Sakura explained by, and Kakashi is here so don't use that excuse. Naruto began to look around the training ground trying to find his sensei, but he couldn't. Naruto was just about to say something until someone else spoke to Naruto, I'm so proud of you. Takashi instantly put Naruto in a headlock and began to rub his head. Takashi sensei what are you doing? And why are you proud of me? You finally got laid. My student finally got laid. Naruto's face soon turned red as those words left Kakashi's mouth and Sakura. Well, Sakura just looked at Naruto like he was crazy while well, what the fuck how the fuck do you know that? Naruto swept his foot under Kakashi's leg and made him trip and quickly got away from Kakashi. Well I was walking by your apartment and I need to talk to you so I went and not. But then I heard it's probably just a random. Come on Nero, I can't wait for it any longer. Both his students were blushing and both had nosebleeds. Naruto felt so creeped out that someone knew what he had done no less than 24 hours ago. He didn't feel disgusted, he didn't feel weird, he felt creeped out. His sensei, Kakashi Haddock, only has one hobby. Reading porn. Now if he could, Kakashi would gladly watch Naruto in action. Stay away from me. Kakashi got off the ground and looked at Naruto with an ice smile. Sakura was just confused. She didn't know if Kakashi and Naruto were just acting or if it was real. She looked towards Naruto with an explanation look and Naruto took what she meant and quickly began to explain an embarrassment last night. I had an intimate moment with Kabi and we happened to have another one this morning. Sakura instantly blushed and slowly looked at Kakashi who was giving her an ice smile you were watch watching them. Kakashi was just about to say something, but was instantly stopped by a strong punch that sent him flying into the forest behind the group. And you, Sakura looked at Naruto with a murderous face which made him go pale. You shouldn't be having sags at your age you pervert. Sakura's fist was mere inches from connecting to Naruto's face, until a strong current of wind made her fist take a far left which she ended up falling. What Naruto saw was Sakura being flown beside him, and then after that, everything went black, as a pair of hands covered his eyes. Well, guess who before Naruto could say, his left ear felt warm and a bit wet which instantly made Naruto guess Kaguya. Naruto immediately tried to get away from Kaguya, but due to her superior strength, Naruto couldn't move that much, but somehow, some inexplicable way, he fell on Kaguya with his hand on top of her upai, which made her smile at him wow, and a are you, I never took you for the type to do this. I think I like it. Naruto was already embarrassed already, but now with Kaguya here, and laying on her just takes the cake. Sakura was conscious during all of this too, and she was listening, and she felt so uncomfortable. Kakashi on the other hand, was just watching from the bushes from afar, and boy he was enjoying the view. But you know Nero I don't always enjoy being on the bottom. Sometimes, Kaguya, in the blink of an eye, flipped the positions that both she and Naruto were in. I like to be on top. Kaguya now had Naruto's hands pinned down with hers on top of his, and she was now staring at him with a serious face, Nero, to be honest with me. Naruto hesitantly nods. Kaguya was never like this, and that was scary to Naruto. Do you want to do it here? Sakura couldn't take it anymore, and she passed out, but she never got up from the ground, and that makes you wonder. Did she want to listen to Naruto's intimate conversation, or did she want to see what kind of women Naruto was seeing? 
Kakashi, on the other hand, was enjoying the view. What do you mean do I want to do it here? Are you crazy? Kaguya gave Naruto a sly smile, and nodded no, I'm perfectly sane, but I'm just suggesting doing it here. You don't want to. Naruto nodded, making Kaguya sigh, and get off of him. You no fun Naru, but I'll allow it this time. As Naruto stood up, he looked at Kaguya. So why are you here anyway? I don't think I've ever seen you around here. Kaguya looks to the bushes where Kakashi is, and she looks directly into his eyes making him flinch. Kagi raises her hand, and aims it towards Kakashi's position, and shoots a wind slash which rips apart the tree surrounding Kakashi, making him visible ka Kakashi. The gray-haired ninja waves at his student with a nice smile. He was watching everything. I don't care if people hear our conversation. But, Kagi started walking towards Kakashi, and when she was inches away she stared right in his eyes. When they know what we do, then that just creeps me out. Do you think I didn't know that it was you that stopped by? I could care less if you talk about it, but don't make Nero feel uncomfortable because if you do, Kaguya then sends another wind attack to a tree, making Kakashi get into a defensive stance. Then I won't hesitate to kill you. Black cloaks with red clouds are worn by the most notorious criminals. These criminals are the most dangerous ninjas out of the elemental nations, and during the Third Shinobi War, that's when the Akatsuki was created. The Akatsuki is a group of all rogue ninjas that are S rank or higher, and they are known for some of the strongest ninjas that could go head to head with the cage. Lady Tsunade, is there something wrong? Shizun asks Tsunade to look at her. I have a bad feeling right now. The Team Kakashi, and Team Guy here now. The way that Kaguya said it, made it seem like she wasn't joking, and that made everyone get worried, but Naruto had a feeling that this had to be a joke Kaguya, are you joking? Turning around slightly to look into the eyes of her lover, Kaguya gives Naruto a heartwarming smile of course I am. He's not dead yet, is he not? Both Naruto and Kakashi widen their eyes, and look at each other oh, and Nero dear, if you try to interfere, you'll be punished when we get home. Is that understood? Kaguya asks with a sadistic smile yes ma'am. Sorry, Kakashi-sensei, I would help, but Kaguya is scary. Naruto replied, as he started to jog away slowly, but before he could, an Anbu appeared in front of him making them both fall to the ground. What the hell? Watch where you're going. Getting up, the Anbu reaches out a hand towards Naruto. Grabbing it, the Anbu pulls Naruto up to his feet. Thanks to nodding at the response, the masked figure walks towards Kakashi without saying a word. Looking at the figure, Naruto just stares before having his attention pulled onto his lover Naru smiling. Naruto pats her the goddess on the head no pouting, Kaguya hits Naruto's chest, and begins walking away I'll be home there. What do you want for dinner? Humming to himself, Naruto grows a smile ramen. Giggling, the goddess just nods her head, and continues walking. Turning around, the blonde notices that his sensei and the Anbu are still conversing, and by the looks of it, it seems serious. What do you think they're talking about? Sakura asks, as she moved towards her teammate. Shrugging, Naruto begins to ponder a question that has been bothering him for some time. Why don't I use the powers I have? That question has been bothering him since he fought his apparent siblings. He has the power of the Shuringen, but doesn't use it. He has the power of Wood Release, but doesn't use it. He has the power of the Ten Tails, but doesn't use it. He has all this power at his fingertips, but never thought to use it. Was it because he wanted to use his own strength to prove that he was better than the family that outcasted him? Or is it something else? Naruto, Sakura both students look at their sensei, as he makes his way towards them Lady Tsunade summoned us, let's go. Thank you for info Akakashi, as requested Team 7 was standing in front of the current Hokage, Team 7 reporting for duty, Kakashi announced, as he launched on the wall, leaving his students in the middle. Currently, the people in the room are Lady Tsunade, Lady Shizun, a pale guy with a smile, Team Guy, and Sabaku no Tamari. What gives granny? We have reports that the Akatsuki has attacked Sunagakur. The end. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time, till then sayonara.